What's up guys? So what makes a high probability swing trade? And how can we consistently find and trade these setups that look like they're right out of a textbook? Let's just dive right into it. I'm going to be going over a few examples of some trades I've taken recently. And as we move along, you will notice that they all have a common theme and they all look very similar. So what you'll notice is that all my swing trades have a narrative. Basically, if we're going to go higher, where are we going higher from? So if we're bullish and we have a bullish strong liquidity, where are we going to go higher from? We need a PDA rate to frame context out of. So that narrative leads me to my context, which essentially is that IRL to ERL, ERL to IRL, it's PDA rate to PDA rate, which on this chart right here, it would be this weekly internal to weekly external, right? So we have been bullish over here. Our drawn liquidity would be this swing high. We have a reason to continue higher off of this PDRA right here, right? So this is our narrative. We're going to go higher from this weekly fair value gap. Next, I would need all time frames in alignment, meaning if I want this weekly fair value gap to be a valid weekly fair value gap to use, we need to make sure it's in context of the time frame above it. So if we go to the monthly, we will see that there is no monthly fair value gap below that we may potentially need to go trade into, which would disrespect that weekly fair value gap. So because there's no monthly fair value gap here, there's no reason to continue lower. We should just continue pushing higher off of the weekly order flow right here. And this weekly fair value gap is valid to take. Remember, if there's a fair value gap on the time frame above you, that is below your current fair value gap right here, this would be low probability. And what's likely to happen is if we had a monthly gap right here, you would draw towards that since the higher time frame is a stronger magnet and that will be the stronger PDA rate. But in this case, we don't have that. So time frames are aligned. This is valid context. And the final thing I look for is to be trading the stronger pair. So we need to know our correlated pairs. Here is a quick graphic I made. I recommend you screenshot this, write it down in your journal, save it for reference later. But with our pair right here, AUD JPY, we would compare it to NZD JPY. So let's look at that. So over here on the right, we have NZD JPY. And what we see is there is no weekly fair value gap in that same area that is on AJ on the left. So there is no weekly context to work with here. So already I prefer AJ. And we could also observe that we are trading above this high right here. It's just showing more strength more intention to displace while NZD has been a bit lackluster over here and trapped in this consolidation. So now that we know we're trading the stronger pair, we have context to work with and we have all our time frames aligned. We can now go into the lower time frames and look for our PDRA and entry model. So from a weekly fair value gap, if you've watched my previous videos, you will know the proper time frame alignment you will be looking for a four hour fair value gap displacing away from that weekly fair value gap, ideally disrespecting a four hour bearish SIBI right here, showing a switch in order flow to the upside. So I'm looking for a four hour fair value gap to displace higher and give us that change in the state of delivery right here. So let's move forward in time and just look for that four hour fair value gap to develop right here. So right here, we get that four hour fair value gap you would mark that out. And what we also see to the left is it is overlapping with a bullish breaker. So there is your entry model, just that four hour valley gap displacing away. Perfect. We also have that overlapping breaker, which is great. So we would enter at the open of this four hour gap, stop loss at this swing low, and you're going to target a simple two R right here. Now, we also need to make sure the time frames are aligned on our entry model right here. So we have a four hour entry. We need to make sure there is no daily fair value gaps below price right here. So let's check the daily chart real quick. Make sure there's none of that happening. And right here, we don't even have a daily fair value gap being created. We can already begin to move higher. So time frames are aligned. Great right here. This is a valid entry to take. So let's move forward and see how this works. And there is your TP plus two R. What you could also do is if you miss this, you could always take a re-entry right here. So here's another four hour for valley gap you could potentially enter on. And your entry would be at the open, stop loss at that swing low. Target would be two R 
right here. And let's make sure that this is in context of the time frame above it. So we want to make sure there's no daily fair value gap being created right here at the time of this entry. So let me just move back and let's go to the daily. And you'll see that we have no daily fair value gap being created yet, right? We have a potential gap right here, but this is looking like a breakaway gap. Remember what a breakaway gap is. It's when you have that third candle close above that second candle that created the fair value gaps high. So it's already looking like a breakaway gap. We can look to take this. Wouldn't expect a deep retracement down into this daily gap. This looks already valid. There's no reason to continue lower. No fair value gaps below price that we should retrace to. It's a valid entry. So let's see how this would have worked. And right there is your 2R. And we got our weekly external range liquidity tag. So over here on our next example, we're still on AJ. As we see, we have expanded above that weekly external range we were working with in that previous example. We're going to be looking for context, right? So there's nothing on the monthly to work with. There's no PDA raise here, no fair value gaps on the weekly, no weekly fair value gaps we need to worry about or potentially use to continue higher. So we're going down to our daily and we see a PDA rate, this fair value gap that we can continue to see higher prices from. We have two here. So you might be wondering, which one do I use? We have one that's standing alone. And then we have this one that's overlapping with this old swing high with these bodies. And we're using these bodies because it's overlapping with a gap. Whereas this swing high is not overlapping with that gap. So we would be using the bodies right here. So on this first tap right here, this initial tap into this daily gap, it wasn't something I'm interested in. We had a huge expansion higher followed by a huge retracement lower on this single daily candle. A bit of a weird scenario here. If we go to the one hour, what we'll see is extremely aggressive displacement down into this daily for valley gap in the matter of three hours right here from 11 to 3 a.m. Quickly came from all the way up here, all the way down here, extremely strong displacement to the downside. So this is not something I was interested in on playing that first one hour gap out of the daily like we usually do. I wanted to see more confirmation here. So this fair value gap right here was not something I trusted over here. I wanted to see at least a four hour fair value gap displacing to the upside. And then I would have been comfortable playing something like this. So if you're uncertain, a certain level might hold, you see very aggressive displacement down into it. You don't have to play that first one hour fair value gap. You could always go up one time frame and demand even more confirmation there, right? A four hour fair value gap would be even stronger, would give even more confirmation than just a single one hour gaps. So this is why I waited for a little more confirmation there. Just extremely aggressive displacement happening way too fast right here into this daily gap. So now that we understand that, let's keep moving forward in price and see what happens. So we have this huge displacement down into the overlapping array right there. So when you have two fair value gaps like this, one that's alone and then beneath it, you have one that's overlapping with another PD array. If this first gap gets disrespected, it's totally fine. You're not going to just turn bearish. What's likely to happen next is price is going to seek the overlapping arrays, which would be the daily gap right here, and then continue to work higher off of that. So now we can delete this fair value gap. And with that logic, just work with this right here. So what we can do here is look for our entry pattern. And again, since this has been quite an aggressive displacement down lower after seeing this huge expansion higher, I'm going to demand a little more confirmation here and look for a four hour fair value gap as opposed to looking for that singular one hour fair value gap displacing away, right? I just want a little more confirmation here. It is a pretty large retracement, I'm not comfortable just taking the first bullish signal. So let's look for that four hour fair value gap right here. So right here, we get that four hour fair value gap disrespecting this four hour SIBI. So this is exactly what I want to see. And we could already start to look for entries. What we can notice here is that this is actually a breakaway gap. Remember, third candle closing over that second candle of the Fair Valley Gaps formation high. Therefore, this Fair Valley Gap should not be traded into. We're likely to create another Fair Valley Gap right here. What you can do is simply just buy this right here, that creation of it. You would set your stop loss at the low and target a 2R. So that would be that trade setup. So let's move that to the side and keep an eye on that. This is not the way I played it. I just wasn't in front of the charts for this. So I literally just waited for another fair value gap to be created. And I took that. So what we'll see here is we create this new fair value gap right here. I decided to set my limit order in here, stop loss at that same low and targeting 2R, which came out to around right there. 
So this right here is your PDA plus entry, that second step right there. And now we can just wait to get filled. Remember news and a kill zone are not necessary for these four hour entries. So we can just set our limits, play the chart as is and let them work. So we got tagged right here and all we need to do now is target that 2R and let's see how this plays out. So both targets hit right here off of either entry. Remember just entering off of that most recent fair valley gap, which is what I did here. And just buying that breakaway gap also worked, setting that stop at the swing low that created that fair valley gap, right? And as you can see here, this breakaway gap never got filled, never needed to. That's why it's very smart to just buy the creation of it. Set your stop loss at a level where even if we do end up coming back and filling this gap, you should still be protected in that event and you can still remain in your trade and have that work for you. So here we are on our third example. This is CAD CHF. Number one thing we look for is our context on a monthly, weekly, or daily. We have weekly context. We have weekly IRL to ERO, also overlapping with this old swing high or mitigation block. If we go to the monthly, we'll see that we'd have no reason to continue lower. We have a breakaway gap on a monthly chart right here because this third candle of this monthly fair value gap formation closed above that second candle's high. So we can go one time frame lower and look for our context there, which we see. So now we just wait for price to enter our context, which we will then go into the four hour and look for our PD array plus entry. So here we are on that forward chart. We see price has come into our point of interest, hitting those overlapping arrays. Now, all we're going to look for is a four hour fair value gap displacing to the upside right here to be able to trade that signaling that change in the state of delivery, giving us our PD array plus entry on this four hour time frame off a weekly higher time frame level. So let's move forward and see when that happens. So we see a few fair value gaps being formed right here. This already is looking like a breakaway gap and we have another fair value gap right here that is overlapping with this breaker as well as order block. So we can mark this out like that. So our overlapping swing high. Also unicorn setup, this is a breaker and order block. So a lot of PD arrays, we have three PD arrays coming together right here, overlapping at this level. So this is a breakaway gap right here by definition, because of that third candle close above the second candle is high, but I wasn't comfortable buying this one off the creation because I saw that we had an overlapping array below. When you see an overlapping array below, when you have a breakaway gap like this, I prefer to just wait and set my limit order at this overlapping level, setting my stop loss right here, put it at the bodies of this breakaway gap low. I wouldn't want to put it all the way down here because we should respect this breaker so having my stop loss just below that breaker at the bodies of this candle is where I put my stop loss and I aimed for a simple 2R, right? And this is a different scenario than this AJ right here that we went over in the previous example, because if we look over here at this breakaway gap that we would have bought, there's no overlapping array. There isn't something I expected it to gravitate towards. Whereas on this setup right here, we have a breakaway gap, but we have overlapping arrays below this breaker with this order block. I prefer to get that entry right here than sort of just chase it all the way up here when we do have a reason to come down lower at this level, right? These overlapping arrays. So just a small little detail there. What I did is limit, stop, target to our news and kill zone are not necessary. So let's just play that chart and let's move forward, see how this played out. And there is your 2R right there. Now, what we're going to see right now is a lesson on why I like to target 2R and why this weekly context is never guaranteed to deliver, which is why I simply don't enter here and set my TP like that, right? Get that asked a lot. Why don't you just target the external range liquidity if you're so confident it's going to go there? Well, it doesn't always have to go there. I'd rather just get a small piece of the pie, get this move right here, which is very high probability. A 2R move within this overall context is extremely high probability. So as we'll see right now, what happens right after I sold right here is, well, we never reached that external range liquidity and went down. So again, it's never guaranteed. That's why I like targeting 2R and just being content with enough. You don't need to catch the whole move. So here we are on our final example and I wanted to show you guys a loss because it's not all sunshine and rainbows with this stuff. This is not a 100% win rate strategy. 
you will take losses no matter how clean the weekly context looks. So first thing we do here, we're looking for context. Let's look at the time frame above us, make sure there's nothing there we need to draw into. Okay, great. Time frames are aligned right here. We look actually bearish on the monthly, disrespecting this monthly gap currently, forming a weekly fair value up to the downside. This should be our drawn liquidity, this monthly swing low. So we have a bearish bias. We have our weekly context right here, IRO to ERO with an overlapping old swing low. Great. Now we can dive into our lower time frames to the four hour chart and look for our PDRA and entry, which is a four hour fair value gap. So here we are on that four hour chart. Price has entered our weekly point of interest and hit these overlapping arrays right there. So we're going to look for our four hour fair value gap displacing to the downside. And we see that happen right here. So we have our PD array plus entry set. This is our change in the state of delivery out of that weekly fair value gap to potentially start seeing bearish order flow. So what I did here is I set my limit order in this four hour gap stop loss at the bodies right here and targeted to R. And that is what the trade setup looked like right there. And as you can see, textbook setup, weekly context. We have our four hour PDA and entry. Let's see how this plays out. Just continue pushing higher, hitting our stop loss, and we never really see any follow through lower. So things like this happen, right? Things like this happen. You have the cleanest textbook setups and they might not work. And that's just part of trading. It's the cost of doing business. I just really wanted to show you guys that it won't always work and you shouldn't feel frustrated if you get stopped out on what might look like the cleanest setup in the world. You will never have a 100% win rate. So one last thing I want to mention regarding to swings. If you're going to be swinging crosses over a big three news event, such as CPI, FOMC, NFP, you want to be taking a minimum four hour entry. The reason is your four hour entries will have a four hour stop loss. There will be a lot of pips in between your entry and your stop loss, and it should protect you from that volatility. Even though it won't be as aggressive as what you see in, you know, indices, majors, dollar, it'll still carry over, but just not to the same extent. So a four hour minimum entry will be pretty safe for those cross swings over big three news events should be fine. So if you guys have any other questions on this, join my free discord below. I'm in there every single day answering questions and it's a community of like-minded individuals where we're all pretty much trading the same things, looking at IRO to ERO on a daily basis. So I think it's a really helpful and great environment to be in if you're a new trader trying to understand and read these markets effectively. So highly recommend you check that out. Link is in the description below. Also, if you're a futures trader, Apex is running an insane 90% discount until May 20th, as well as an even more insane promo where you can get a $250,000 account for the price of a 50K account. Meaning the 250K was 537 per month. It is now $18.70 for the first month, and they will be running this until the end of May. So without a doubt, this is the best opportunity to get stupid cheap eval accounts for you futures traders. And that will be running until the end of May. So you can use code pickle for that. They are my number one preferred prop firm. So highly recommend go check that out. And as always guys, thanks so much for watching until the very end. I hope you found this.